When their coach speaks, the Argentina under-17 squad listens. That's because Jose Luis Brown is a fine example to any budding international. He was a central defender who played 36 times for his country. In those 36 matches, he only ever scored once, but it was a vital goal. It came in 1986 at the FIFA World Cup in Mexico with a squad that some of his compatriots had already written off. When the team arrived in Mexico, we were suffering from a lot of criticism at home. But despite that, we were really confident. But there was zero confidence from all those around us. The truth is that the public and the newspapers didn't think we would do anything. If you think about it, a lot of the media in the country only went and paid the expenses for the first phase. They thought we'd be back in the country after that. So that was the attitude we faced when we travelled. But in a collective sense, this was a strong group of players. Looking back now, it can be a little hard to appreciate the individual talents of the team. So overwhelming was the influence of Diego Maradona. But this was a squad with capable players in every position. While El Diego was still gathering momentum, Argentina beat Korea and Bulgaria and drew with holders Italy to finish top of their first round group. They were marshalled by one of football's most fastidious coaches. Carlos Bilardo. I wish that all the crazy people in the world would be crazy like Carlos. Then it would be a much better world. Carlos was a studious coach. He would check all our opponents and he was very obsessive in everything to do with set pieces and tactics. He was a coach that made you think about football 24 hours a day. He was that kind of person, and I know, I had Bellardo as coach from the time I was 17 years old. The second round saw Argentina take on and beat their traditional rivals Uruguay, thanks to a Pedro Pasculi goal. That set up a quarter-final with England, a country Argentina had been at war with four short years previously. I'm not going to tell you that there wasn't a family member or the son of a friend or an acquaintance who didn't experience the awful events that happened in the Falkland Islands. If I tell you that we didn't think about it at all, I'd be lying because yes, I thought about it. But after that, I thought about the match. I thought about a very important match we had to win to go to the next stage. This match, of course, is remembered for Diego Maradona's two goals, both the stuff of legend. Brown was sharing the field with him and still couldn't see his colleague's sleight of hand. That goal with a hand was Diego being inspired. But I have to say that at the time, I didn't realise what had happened. I didn't realise what he'd done, but, well, Diego was really astute. We say here that he's like an animal. He's very quick and does things instinctively. He took advantage of the situation, and that was that. And then after that, there was the second goal. Now, that was something very beautiful, and because of the position I had on the pitch, I was a privileged spectator. I was able to see it all from the defence. I could see how Diego went through all his opponents and scored the goal. We all went running to the corner flag to celebrate. I thought it was a very beautiful goal. It was a goal in a million. Two more Maradona goals saw off Belgium and Argentina were in the final against West Germany. The squad, initially much maligned, were 90 minutes from immortality. And they were nervous. It was a World Cup final. How can you not be worried? I don't believe anyone who, before a decisive match, says that he's not nervous. It's a lie. It's a lie because you can't have a bigger experience in all of sport than a World Cup final. I remember we all got together in a room in the middle of the night. There was Ruggeri, Trobiano, Valdano, me, Almiron. We were all in the room and then we thought about the number of players who'd gone through what we were going through. We realised we were privileged. 
Even today, when you think about all of football's history, all the people who've been a part of the sport, well, there aren't many who've experienced such a moment. After 20 minutes of cagey football, Argentina attacked down the right, and Cachufo won a free kick on the edge of the area. Burachaga shaped up to take it. Brown, who'd never scored a goal for his country, joined Maradona and the others in the attack. I think Schumacher was overconfident. Burashaga hit it hard and well. This was one of Burashaga's great strengths. It's not like he hit the ball with bend or too slowly. That gives the keeper time. And when I saw that the keeper had come out and failed to get it, I thought, that's it. I was always strong and very confident in the air. So I saw that he'd come out and not reached it, and I thought, goal! What can I say? I'm telling you this today and I still get emotional. I'm telling you this and getting emotional because to score a goal in a World Cup final is the very best thing that can happen to you. Shortly after half-time, Valdano put Argentina two ahead. But with Brown struggling with injury, Argentina became vulnerable at set pieces. Rummenigge pulled one back. Fuller levelled the scores at 2-2 with 10 minutes left. But one final piece of Maradona magic freed Burachaga. Argentina were world champions by three goals to two. Look, to win a World Cup is the best. There's nothing bigger than that. In football, there's nothing better than that. And to win wearing the colours of my country was, personally, the most tremendous satisfaction. This is what I tell the kids I'm in charge of. I'm in charge of the under-17 national team, and I instil in them the love for the Argentine national team shirt. I always say that it's a very special sensation when you're in the dressing room and they tell you it's time to go to the pitch and you put on the blue and white shirt to come out to play. It's something really difficult to explain, but it's beautiful. It's a wonderful thing for any player.